Hello, everybody, and welcome to the award-winning car talk show in real time, your weekly go-to all things automotive place. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, Jeffrey Zeke, and I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us on this uh, Saturday. Uh, so glad that you could uh, ride along with us. we got a lot coming up on today's show, and we think that you'll really enjoy it. we got lots of guests uh, lined up that we talked about in our preview, and um, it's, uh, it's going to be a great day. Welcome back from California. I'm glad to be back. Glad to be back. It, it's kind of weird. I, I was online. I was listening to the show, but it's kind of weird not being here listening to the show for me, and I know it's kind of weird for everybody out there listening to the show. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's good to be back. Well, we're glad to have you back. Mr. Mars, uh, how are things over there in Niederville? Everything's going well. Is it? Yeah, about as well as could be expected under the circumstances. Is it kind of tongue-in-cheek? Or? Yeah, yeah, you know how it is. Life well, is I busy. Don't, but I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, I figured. Nobody that's else wants yeah, to that's know. what I'm saying. You want me to lie or you want me to tell you the truth? No, I don't want to. You just go ahead and lie. <laughs> yeah, everything's great. Wonderful. Well, good. Uh, it is Niederville. It is Niederville. Hey, it's good to see a little bit of rain. I know it's kind of surprising. You got to remember, I'm from California. Coming from California, it doesn't rain there, but it's it's good to see the ground is wet here. You know, you don't have we, to. We did have some rain while you were gone. It looks like it's going to rain today. It was kind of a surprise. I didn't think it was going to rain today. Mm -hmm. It's chilly, but uh, it's a little bit chilly. Mr. Zekin is here, and uh, Mr. Zekin was very kind to with his wife. They brought over dinner last night. We had some uh, Los Tios to go. It was good. So. We're off to a great start for this weekend. And it's something you want to do if your restaurants aren't open and they're doing to go, uh, door dash them or go there and pick up food because uh, every, we need to do everything we can to keep them in business. Do we have Randy? Well, we've got Randy, but I can't hear right. Randy. Well, so um, then we don't have Randy. So um, I just wanted to uh, give you a couple of things that I ran across in automotive news this week while Mr. Mars is trying to figure out. We've only had an hour and a half. To figure stuff out and seem you can get on the air and, and we I can't think Randy's it out. been there about fifteen minutes. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, a company called Gentex has formed a partnership with a company called Pay by Car Incorporated, a Boston provider of in vehicle payment solutions. The partners use Gentex integrated toll module that operates via RFID transponder to let drivers pay for gas. Entirely contactless. Oh, gosh. The solution allows drivers to use their smartphone and toll transponder to fuel up at certain gasoline stations without using cash or a credit card. Somebody coming up to us with a solution nobody really cares about. Paired with a, oh, no. Paired with a module, which is factory integrated into the vehicle. Pay by car can identify autos at participating gasoline stations. The system sends a text to the driver who replies with the station pump number he or she is using, pay-by-car turns on the pump, registers the purchase, charges the credit card on file, and issues an email receipt. And somewhere in there, the vehicle manufacturer takes a penny a gallon or something like that because of the integration into the vehicle. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Well, you don't have to jack with anything. You well, just, you still got to get out and pump the gas. You still got to touch something to pump the gas. Well, you do have to do that. That's yeah. that a good point. And if you just wash your hands, who cares? I guess. But I know people that say, I sure wish we had gas station attendants because I don't yeah. want to be getting out of the car and dealing with any of that anymore. Well, and depending on what state you live in, that's true. You got to remember the state of Oregon, you, there is no self service fuel in Oregon. There is no self service gas stations in New Jersey either. They all have pump attendants by law. They are not allowed to do self service in New Jersey or Oregon, which I think is the weirdest thing. Well, yeah. I kind of like it, actually. Well, you want to roll over, that's the opening to this thing. Ding, ding. You want to roll over the. Guy with the star comes out and checks your oil and checks with an attitude, probably these days. Well, in Jersey, everybody has an attitude. In Jersey, because they forget about it because they're ticked off because they're living there. Well, because yeah, they can't afford to get out, can't afford to live there either. But either way, well, um, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about Cadillac offering car dealerships to get out of the Cadillac sales business and going EV. Well, they either get out of Cadillac, take the name, take the moniker off of the dealership, and not do anything with Cadillac anymore, and Cadillac would pay them to get out, 
or they invest at least two to three hundred thousand dollars in infrastructure within the dealership to get on board with their EV thinking that's mm -hmm. coming up here in the next couple of years. Well, nearly one in five Cadillac dealers in the United States reportedly have hand. decided to quit the brand rather than make costly upgrades to sell and service electric vehicles. That's wow, that's <clears throat> Surprising to me. Cadillac spokesman would not confirm how many of the brand's 880 dealers accepted the buyout offers. Dealers had until November 30th to decide to the offers, which generally ranged from 300 to more than $500,000 buyouts. Well, cash motivates. You know, when you look at some of the, the rural stores, you know, you got a, a Cadillac dealer in, and this isn't throwing Tim rocks at anybody. Yeah, well, I was going to say like Victoria. And, um, yeah, how many know, do Cadillacs they, does he sell? Well, probably not many, but how much investment does he want to make in an EV infrastructure in, in Victoria, Victoria, Texas? Right. Right. Now, Buzz, you could send your comments to us at info at inwheeltime.com um, because Buzz would say you could go anywhere you want. Uh, on an EV, and he's done the videos for it. But, you know, thinking about even in today's uh, financial situation, you know, I'm a small Cadillac dealer in a very rural area that doesn't see an EV market, and I can get $300,000 from General Motors or $500,000 from General Motors. Sign me up. I'll take it. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, and GM went through this back in uh, 09. 07, 08, 09, as they were shutting down dealers all around the country. Um, and, and here in Texas, probably lost, you know, 100 dealers, 150 dealers here in Texas. But there were so many, it was oversaturated. Oh, you know, it was both, very much was. Yeah, you and I both know that. You know, I remember there used to be, a, you know, a Chevrolet Oldsmobile Frigidaire franchise in uh in edna texas it's all gone now i don't even think the chevy store is there anymore so there was there was a little bit too much we need to get you a microphone sir if you're going to yeah the small towns cadillac is always dueled with chevrolet or, that's or, Jeff right. Zekin talking that's off camera right now so our our cadillac now, why are the we king of cadillacs him? are we looking at him for a reason yeah Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. Just check it. About 17% or roughly 150 dealers are taking the buyouts. GM is requiring dealers to stay with Cadillac to spend at least $200,000 on chargers, tooling, and training in order to sell the EVs being rolled out starting in 2022. Cadillac experts expects to sell only EVs by 2030 if it feels the market is ready. Well, it, GM recently said it would launch Cadillac's first full EV, the Lyric, in early 22, nine months sooner than previously planned. And the other thing you have to look at is what Cadillac's done over the last few years. You know, they moved up to New York because that's where they thought it, their they've already, core market already was. Moved out. Well, I know, but I mean, so so if you're a dealer and you're watching all this stuff going on, then you have to kind of wonder where's this going to go with the EVs particularly if you got to lay out 200k to start right. just just to start you know and if the if the incentive is 300 to 500,000 just that 300,000 you know you're talking Cadillac's going to throw 50 million dollars at eliminating points around the country you know there don't get me going on GM's financial decisions sometimes so, uh, so we were having some issues so we should have Randy on the phone we don't have the video Seems oh, okay. like we can do one or the other. Hey, Randy, what's up? Hey, guys, I'm good. How are you? Sorry about the video. I don't know what's going on either. It's technology. Yeah, we know? can do one or the other for some reason this morning. Well, it'll work. So talk I to us see about myself on a camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Randy, uh, Woodlands Car Club, are you a member of that too? I am a, wo a member of the Woodlands Car Club. Um, what car club are I, you not I, a member of, Randy? <laughs> yeah, there aren't the many. Corvette Club. There aren't many. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right at the Corvette Club. Well, so um, tell me about the Woodlands Car Club, first of all. Do what now? I said tell me about the Woodlands Car Club, if you would, please, sir. Well, the Woodlands Car Club, you know, pretty much every month, um, the, the, really the only event we do is the uh, Coffee and Cars for a Cause out at the Woodlands Marketplace. But that's the first Sunday of every month, rain or shine. And uh, this month we've got... We're doing a toy drive, so we've got the Christmas toy drive. We've got a vintage fire truck coming out tomorrow morning, and um, we'll collect toys for the Women's Center uh, in Montgomery County, and those toys will be distributed, you know, throughout that center. 
But that event, every quarter, the uh, Marketplace Association decides who, which charity in Montgomery County gets a, um, the, the charity donation. And um, so it changes quarterly. But uh, this quarter, again, it's the Women's Center. I think they've got Inspiration Ranch coming out as well. Um, but the toy drive will be very specifically for that Women's Center. And where are you guys going to be doing this at? It's at Marketplace in the Woodlands, which is 9595 Six Pines Drive in the Woodlands. It's right behind the mall. Okay. And is this going to be a, a come out, gather with your car, open your trunk, and uh, and deliver the toys? Or is this going to be a drive-through collection point? How, how are you guys setting this up? No, this is, a, this is an old-fashioned cruise-in. Um, what they do is they shut down the Marketplace uh, from... We get there about a quarter till six in the morning, but they shut it down. We open up the gates at six thirty. Uh, you come in, you make a charity donation as you enter, and uh, you park your cars. We can get about one hundred and fifty cars out there. Uh, now during the Christmas Christmas toy drive every year, we actually do have people that because this this event location will fill up. We have people that cruise through and drop toys off, and then just keep on going. Uh, but it's a nice little setting. It's very comfortable, very quaint. And um, very laid back. Everybody gets along. So it's just a bunch of people sitting out there with their coffee, enjoying their cars, enjoying their friends. And um, we do it all for charity. So even, even if people are wanting to donate a toy but don't have a, a toy car to bring to it, they're welcome to bring a toy, drive through, take a peek at some of the cars that are there, and get on about the rest of their day. Oh, that's correct. There's a parking garage right beside the uh, – or right behind one of the buildings – so even if they want to park and walk over and walk around, look at the cars, uh, they can take all the time they want to do that. Hey, Randy, real quick, speaking of that, you've got another toy drive going on uh, that involves people being able to go online and contribute. Well, we do. And and let me explain how that works. But before before we move on to that, let me mention that also tomorrow we've got the president of the Montgomery County Food Bank coming out to TWCC. And Montgomery County Automotive Enthusiasts, MCAE, we held a fall car show in October at Papa's on the Lake. Um, we collected, it's only $1,000, but this is an amazing number to me. We collected enough money that we will donate tomorrow to the food bank. And this will be, this will be MCAE working in conjunction with, with the Woodlands Car Club. Because what we're, you know, the idea is we work with as many area clubs as we can to make a bigger happening in the in the city of Houston. Uh, but we'll be able to provide with that thousand dollars. That'll provide five thousand meals for the needy. Wow! And that check will be presented tomorrow. So at Christmas time, and especially with the pandemic, that's huge. Yes, it is. Um, and, and so the, you know, if anybody if anybody wants to come out and, and getting that in that picture, we'd love to have them in the picture with us. And and it just says a lot about the automotive community, whether it's Houston or or Detroit or Dallas or, or uh, the West Coast. The automotive community is very philanthropic, and they generally most all of the clubs have an association with a charity that they try and fund uh, through their activities. So it's pretty awesome. Good job. Well done. Well, oh, thank you. What kind Thank of cars you. are out um, there? Pardon me? What kind of cars are out there? Well, that, that event's open to all makes and models. So if you've got something, even if you, uh, like Al or Andrew has that, uh, that one machine that somebody built with the, with the wing doors and stuff on it, we don't care. Bring it out. You never know what's going to show up. You yeah, never know what's going to show up. <laughs> He's got his own Jeff Zekin over there. <laughs> I do have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that Ellery back there? No, no, that's Robert Helmer. Oh, okay. Well, the, the, Robert, the, Robert was the founder of MCAE and a few other clubs here in town. And, and the fun thing about that is, you know, if you're into European exotics or if you're in, into American muscle or you're into classic American cars, you know, all of that kind of shows up at these events. You know, it's not, it's not brand specific. Uh, uh, that's as, that's as right. We've got the are. entire mix. We, you run the entire gamut. I mean, you see... Uh, everything from a, a vintage Mustang or even something from Europe out there. Oh, I knew you a were going to say ago, Mustang. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, well, we have Mustangs out there, but a couple of weeks ago we had uh, a guy showed up. He was a, he used to be a Brit a doctor in, in England. Uh, he's a car guy, and he showed up with Buddy Holly's uh, funeral car. 
that he brought out. Yeah, well, we knew if he was from England, he wasn't a dentist. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> You're right. <laughs> you, nailed, you nailed that. It could be anywhere in Europe, right? Oh my God! I'm sorry. Send your comments to info at inwheeltime. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Ad- address yeah, that to Conrad. That one, guys. <laughs> we're yeah. in trouble for that. Address one. the hate mail to Conrad. That's the way that works. <laughs> so you you ask about what the event we have going next weekend? Yeah, real quick. And and, and this worked out really kind of cool. We um, we worked with a church last year and pulling together a toy drive. Um, this year, what they've done, we adopt. You go online and you adopt kids. So you've got boys and girls, you know, from six months old up. Virtually. You've yeah, you've got a, you've got a list of them to pick from, basically. That's correct. On the website, you've got a list of kids that you can adopt. You just sign up under that name. It puts your name attached to that kid. They've got a list of toys that they're wishing for. And then uh, what we decided to do in working with the church is we're going to gather at the Kroger at the corner of 99 and 59 there in New Caney about 11.30 next Sunday morning, and then at about quarter till 12, we're going to drive over to the church and kind of do a drive-by car show toy drop-off. Oh, cool. And, yeah, and, I mean, then the church will take those toys. They'll get with the parents. They'll wrap them and make sure the children get them. Nice. Cool. Well, we we certainly appreciate the time you're taking the, to join us this morning, Randy. and, and uh, Thanks for all your us. hard work. Yeah, yeah, really. It's oh, thank time. you guys, man. It, you know, you guys are part of this community with us, and you, you do a great service for everybody. Else. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And uh, if we don't talk to you, you guys have a, a great Christmas and uh, a safe and wonderful new year, and we'll be in touch with it. Okay. You guys do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Randy Weldon. With okay. all North the car clubs <laughs> in Houston that have to yeah, do Up with on the north, west, east, you know, all of them up there. Sorry, if we, somewhat Ford-centric man. Yeah, you know he, he loves his Mustangs, and he's always sending us Ford stuff to post in in wheel time as well. So in the meantime, while Mr. Mars switches out with Mr. Zeke, and then we wait for the uh, car of the week, the used car of the week. Um, I did want to mention that Ford announced that they are delaying the release of the Bronco, the much hailed and waited Bronco until summer. Uh, They're delaying it because of coronavirus-related supplier issues. Ford did not specify which suppliers were experiencing problems. The Bronco is being built at the automaker's Michigan assembly plant in Wayne. Uh, Ford said order banks, which were set to open next week, will now open in mid-January for reservation holders to complete their purchase. Additionally, the Sasquatch package with the manual transmission will be pushed back to the 2022 model year. Yeah, but I also understand that the Bronco Sport, which is not, it, it's a different version of the Bronco, but the Bronco Sport, they're actually beginning deliveries of right now. So it, it's, it's not the Bronco that you see with the doors and the roof off. It's more of a an edge uh, derivative of the Bronco, but yeah, they are they're starting to make deliveries of that right now. So neat, if you, you yeah, know, if you want that the new Bronco Sport, go to your Ford dealer. They're showing up. So Jeffrey Zekin has made the switch. The Hello. Je- we everybody asks if you ever follow us on Facebook. There's somebody on there that says we need more Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Well, we now have more Jeff. We've got more Jeff. And more Jeff uh, today is reviewing the 2016 Mustang V6. You know, every week we have tasked Mr. Zekin to please uh, come up with a pre-owned car of the week Mm -hmm. because Mike and I do the new cars. So we thought, well, let's throw the used car in there. I've got a P51 Mustang. I've got an airplane. Oh, cool. Does that 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 fit? No, that does not work, but thanks for the try anyway. That's the V12 (laughs) version. V12. Well, it is. It's a 2016 Ford Mustang. Uh, it is a coupe or a coupe, as they say. In they only make them in coupes. Well, a coupe. Well, they make convertibles. Convertibles. Yeah. So they do make a coupe. Uh, they make a premium, a GT premium, a convertible, and just a plain old GT. So what uh, we have here is the coupe, and this is uh, a sports sports car, and it is a four seater. Notice I wow. didn't say four passenger. Yeah. It is a four seater. Well, that makes sense. Yes. Exactly, not four passengers. Because the person in the back needs to be a bilateral amputee. Okay. 
Because there uh, is no real leg room in the back of a in the back of a Mustang, or or seat room, or butt room, or anything like that. But as you'll see coming up on the interior shot, it's got that back seat like the police car we talked about with the Camaro. You just fit your butt in. Isn't it. Isn't this the current body style? Uh, this is a 2016. Yes, they're all they're all similar in some some capacity well, I, or another. But I think that this is the current body style. Right. So uh, and the the exterior features. It's got the uh, dusk sensing headlights. Uh, it has post collision safety system, and I think that just activates all the safety uh, lighting and things if you do get in a wreck of any tragedy that happens to the vehicle. Uh, body moldings, front fascia, fog lamps, 17 by 7.6 wheels. Uh, you can get them on a chrome. On the six or, cylinder. On the six cylinder, yes. You can get them in a chrome or a painted alloy, and it's a 235-55 R17 tire, which you can get them either in, you know, the Continental, the Michelins, uh, the Goodyears, and so on. Bridgestone is actually back uh, with Ford many, many years ago they came back. So the interior highlights, uh, it will, we'll be moving on to that, is the uh, child seat anchors. Now, that's something that, that's important. If you do utilize the back seat, you've got the car seat for the uh, little little uh, infant or small individual that you can tie it down. Yeah, it looks like the dash right there. Right, that does look like the dash. But and, the, yeah, the child seat anchors, it actually latches into right. the, these little loops in the back of the seat. Exactly. And you got, uh, according to that shot there, you've got the front airbag, so you've got USB connections, you've got six speakers. And of course, in the six-cylinder, it's mainly cloth. Folks don't do a lot of leather because you want to downsize it, or not downsize the, the, the least expensive way right, to go. Right, right, right. Uh, Price-wise, heated mirrors, uh, and you've got six-way uh, adjustable driver seat. But looking this. at that, that's still all Mustang. Right. There you go. There's the back seat, and that looks like the well for your butt, in my opinion. So If your butt's well, I'm okay, <laughs> too. <laughs> Woo! 3.6 uh, V6. It's a double overhead cam, variable timing, Conrad. I mean, you, you'd be yep. impressed with that. 300 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque. Save newton meters, um, and of course, the uh, the uh, mileage you got seventeen in the city, and you've got uh, twenty eight on the highway. It's an average combined of about twenty one, and uh, you've got uh, things I, I looked into on this that we don't rarely mention, but the warranty, the basic three year thirty six thousand mile warranty on it. You got a powertrain and roadside assistance for sixty sixty, so that that's important to know. You know. Well, and if you're in the used car market, you know, and you're buying at a Ford dealership, you can get this on a certified pre-owned. You can. Yeah. All of that improves over and, over and above it. Exactly. The ride and handling, you got stability control, traction control, uh, four-wheel ABS, you got TPMS on the tires, and you got electri you got electric power steering. We'd fly by wire. Right. Well, yeah, it's the, the power assist is electric, but there's still a mechanical connection to the steering system. Right. right. And and I believe Ford uses a servo system for the electric assist, right. not a magnetic electrical assist. Guys like me just call it fly by wire. Okay. Yeah, fly by wire. Never mind. So um, in the pricing of this, Don asked uh, for something a little bit different on this. This vehicle that we're looking at is 24145 at 3,845 miles. It's got 3,800 miles on it. No, oh, that's no miles. No miles at all for 24,145. Now, I wanted to compare it to some of the other higher ends. So, the 2016 GT Premium with 110,000 miles is 19,9. So, the higher the mileage, the lower the price. Obviously. Well, it's consistent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The but six, you get a V8. Yeah, but you also get 100,000 miles. Right. So, and, that, and, with that comes a level of maintenance expense that's going to escalate as well. And all the abuse in that 110. Because it's a V8. Right. Now, the GT Premium 2016 with 31,000 miles is 29.8. And then, of course, if you get into the Shelby GT350, it's 47.8 with only 6,400 miles. Yeah, so, but that's that's a collector car. Yeah. And, of course, the, the, the vehicles are either Camaro-like uh, vehicles and then, of course, the Dodge Challenger mm -hmm. on that. The pony car world. Mm -hmm. and it was They are called pony cars because of the Mustang. Mm, there you have it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hey, if you uh, got a comment or question, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, the address is info at inwheeltime.com. There you go. Do we have any car shows, cruise-ins, cruises, that sort of thing? Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, well, um, this afternoon or this morning at uh, Twin Peaks up in the woodlands is uh, – Troy Dixon and Houston Performance Driving, they're doing a toy drive. We've got Randy up at uh, tomorrow morning at the it Woodlands. It rained out. 
Yeah, well, it possibly will. But, uh, you know, the Woodlands uh, Car Club is going to do uh, their toy drive in Marketplace. And then also uh, tomorrow is Coffee and Chrome. Uh, if all is going well as far as weather-wise yep. at uh, Prince's. At Prince's in uh, Sugarland. In, at uh, Sharpstown, Sharpstown Golf Course. Golf mm-hmm. Course. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then there's always other stuff going on. The Kima Car Meet, uh, 6 p.m. tonight. At 4 p.m. tonight at uh, Euro World Motorsports, they're doing a toy drive in Tomball. Uh, Crew on Deck is doing their toy drive at Kim's Tea House tonight at 6 p.m. Um, uh, tomorrow, Coffee and Donuts in Navasota. Um, uh, classic Car Community uh, on the field in Montgomery, uh, which is, what, 105 and 149. Uh, so there's always stuff going on. And uh, so those are, those are the things to go to here locally in Houston. Okay. Not that you're ever here. Not that I'm. Not that I'm ever here. Oh, well, did you? By the way, did you get the Oldsmobile? No, it's, I was just about to say the uh, lock cylinder in the Oldsmobile jammed up on me, and I don't know if I, uh, if you know, is it the key that is wrong? And I've got two keys, and they both do the same thing. It just doesn't rotate far enough right now. So, I'm you gonna, know, that's all you got to do is hit stick that pin in there and pull that cylinder out. Well, it's to pull the cylinder out, but it's also a matter of i got to take the steering wheel off to replace the piece I need to replace uh-huh. inside of there as well. So. Are you going to do that? Uh, I can do that. I'll, I just got to get Angela's car out of the garage to do it, and she took the key with her to California. <laughs> Are you serious? You only have one key? At- well, no, we have two keys, but the, it's, it's a keyless, uh, and one of the remotes doesn't work. So oh she has God. the good remote with her, and I the other remote... I can't move her, her car out of the. That's garage. just that's just friggin' great. Love those kind of things. All right. Uh, as far as news is concerned, Ford Motor Company said Tuesday the Mach E GT Performance Edition will go from zero to sixty miles an hour in three point five seconds. Yikes! Get four hundred and eighty horsepower and produce six hundred and thirty four pound feet of torque. The automaker is t- targeting a range of two hundred thirty five miles with the uh, GT Performance Edition. That's good. The optional, That's pretty good range. Yeah. The optional package comes with a few cosmetic upgrades, including 19-inch front brakes, an aluminum applique on the instrument panel, and a special badge on the rear of the vehicle. It's available in eight colors. First Mustang Mach-E deliveries are expected to begin this month, although the GT and the Performance Edition won't be available until next summer. And get this. Cadillac General Motors has corrected an online advertising campaign that overstated the capabilities of its Super Cruise driver assist system. This week, ads for the system available on a growing number of Cadillac vehicles appeared with a headline that said, Cadillac Super Cruise Experience Autonomous Driving. Oops. Oh, I, but the system. Some attorneys had exploded. But the. Yes. But the system is not autonomous. It always requires a human driver who maintains responsibility for all vehicle operations. The advertisement can be found with a number of search terms and now reads, Cadillac Super Cruise, the future of driving. Cadillac's postperson said the mix-up was inadvertent. Yeah, and and somebody in the marketing department got fired. (laughs) Big time. You know that. So you heard uh, the new Dodge Ram 3500 for 2021 is going to have the highest towing capacity in history. It's got a towing capacity, and this is with the diesel and the and the dually of 37,100 pounds towing capacity, beating the Ford F450 that is rated at 37,000 pounds and really kind of stomping the Duramax in their in their one ton as well. Well, so okay. Dodge and, or excuse me, Ram is real proud to take the lead in that. Well, we're hoping to talk to Mr. Jack Nerad, writer, author, editor and radio host, and we're going to talk about some interesting subject matter coming up right after a quick break here on the In Wheel Time program. Thanks for joining us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Huh. Well, well, we'll be right back if you push that button and it plays Texas a little music. Texas Truck Works is your go-to truck customizer. From mild-to-wild lift kits, custom wheels, and steering and handling enhancements to the best personal and commercial wraps, Texas Truck Works delivers. Let Texas Truck Works founder Scott Stevens help you get the most out of your truck or Jeep. Texas Truck Works has decades of customizing experience, including power adders and complete engine swaps. Let the Texas Truck Works team design an upgrade plan that fits your budget. Get truck 
truck attitude today at texastruckworks.com. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy a loopy tortilla breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, December 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and restaurants. Mods all in one place. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a three hour friends and family event. The Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I 10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, December 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at the Loopies in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there too, and you're invited to join us. We'll see you there. Is your- 